Stay tuned for the video. What's going on, YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at it with another video today. Brand new day. Happy, what is it, Thursday. Okay. So we got to get into this American Horror Story Review 1984 Season 9. Episode 8, Rest in Pieces. And I think we could see why it was called that. And we have one episode left. We not get, don't we usually get 10 episodes? Because next week is the finale. So um, I guess, but without any further ado, let's get into it. It is exactly one day before Halloween in 1989, and we got your girls Brooke and Donna chilling at a diner, and you know they just rapping, talking it up, and you know basically Brooke was talking about you know where she wanted to go, and Donna asked her where did you want to go, and she said something about Australia. She was like she liked the little Crocodile Dundee movies if I if if I'm not wrong, and I was like girl you better look out for more than that. You know they got them big ass spiders. You know I. I me, personally, I've never been to Australia, but, I mean, I know that's what's bound to be seen if I ever do go over there. Because let me tell you something, okay? I ain't talking, I'm not talking about um, I my Australians out there. No offense at all. I'm not talking about your beautiful um, country or whatever. But I, I just have to be prepared. If I ever go to Australia, I have to be near the airport immediately, ASAP, as soon as possible. Because... If I go around some area and there's nothing but fucking webs, I'm going the fuck home. I don't care. Because the moment I see a black, eight-legged, having-ass figure running around just creeping or just walking around just creeping, waiting for me to make a mistake and walk somewhere where I ain't got no business and just look to and get my ass, no the fuck ma'am, and just look it like on some predator shit, no! Or I meant to say alien. Whoops. Rewind, but let's get back into the story. However... Brooke, she still has to take care of Margaret. That's the plan. She still want to get her revenge on this crazy heifer. And before you know it, here comes this redhead woman with glasses on. You know, she was like, girl, you look just like Brooke. Brooke, uh, what's her last name? I forgot. And uh, has anybody ever told you that? And Brooke was like, yeah, all the time. You know, because she thought, like, oh, shit, does she know who I am? Does she know who I am? And all of a sudden, this woman has the nerve to just sit her ass down, get the yabbity, yabbity, yap, yap. Um, while Donna trying to eat her food, and Donna's like, damn, bitch, you can at least say, may I sit down? You just scoot your little ass on the damn chair while I'm trying to eat my damn food. Hell wrong with you. And she just going on about, like, I think horrors, 80 movies, if I'm not correct. You know, it wasn't too important until we got, we, took, we saw her ass again. And, uh, she was like, she started talking about the, uh, the festival that Margaret is hosting and everything, and, uh, the whole thing with Jingle Jangles, and she did say, she, I think she did say she was writing a book on Brooke. Writing a book on Brooke and Jingle Jangles. And, uh, you know, she was just rambling on and rambling on. And they were like, girl, do you ever stop talking? And Brooke was like, you know what, it's nice to meet you, but I'm going to get my ass on up out of here. And so Donna, she rolls up out of here too. She was like, the lady was like, are you going to eat that? And so she ate up the rest of their damn food. So we see that same old counselor guy with the long hair and the little scarf bandana on. He just walking, I guess, going back to uh, Redwood. And all of a sudden, we see this car speeds up past him, and he stops. And lo and behold, it's crazy Bruce. And Bruce was like, you know, you need a ride or something? He was like, yeah, pretty much. I'm trying to get to Camp Redwood. And lo and behold, Bruce is trying to get to Camp Redwood to go find uh, Brooke. I was going to say Bridget. Uh, Brooke and Donna, because, you know, he ain't got no more thumbs. Because, you know, they just sliced and diced him last episode. To be honest, though, they should have killed his ass. But, unfortunately, he's here. And so, as they're driving, listening to music, there's this lady in the background, you know, saying, help, or whatever the hell she's saying. And the guy was like, do you hear that? And Bruce was like, oh, shit. It's somebody in the damn trunk from last night. Now, you see, it was some lady talking about, oh, we're going to get you to the hospital. You know, she trying to, you know, aid him and all this, trying to be nice to this man. Lo and behold, his ass, he um, grabs her little handkerchief or her little scarf that she got on her neck and chokes her ass to sleep and puts her in the damn trunk. And so we go back to the present day with them in the car. And, you know, he opens up the trunk with this woman up in the trunk that tried to help his old sorry ass. And he was like, we're trying to listen to whatever he said, whoever that was playing in the, in the background. And, you know, she was trying to say, please don't kill me. I won't say nothing. And he was like, that's the best you could do. Plead for your life. And then she started, like, she couldn't really get it out. And that kind of would have annoyed me, too, being, like, this crazy-ass killer and whatnot. She was like, what if I told you that 
um, something, something, and she couldn't get it out, and he, like, stabs the shit out of her right in her damn, uh, to the chest, and just, boom, I said, and I felt that, I was like, Jesus Christ, sir, like, he just got fed up with her ass, he said, it was a hot ass mess, so then, we get back to the tour bus, full of bloody ass, like I said last week, everybody dead, everybody got sliced up, everybody got cut up and, and fucked up, okay, um, we see Margaret and, uh, Courtney with the wig, <laughs> So, Margaret, she was having a fit. She said, Kaja Gugu, if I'm saying that right, Kaja Gugu is dead and so is everybody else. But she was letting Courtney know, look, we have an event to host tomorrow. And this has to be clean as a whistle. Like the tour bus and all. She said, I'm going to need to get you some trash bags, some good rubber gloves, a butcher knife, I think she said. And I want you to slice and dice these bodies up and put them in a bag because obviously it just ain't going to work out any other way. And I want you to clean this damn tour bus from top to bottom because they are still going to perform. And I said, oh, I guess she know they come, they die and come back to life. I'm guessing that's what she meant. And so we see little Courtney, he got his little plastic cover on, and he got his gloves on, he got the bags, he's still, he putting some bodies and stuff in a, in like a, a van or something, and he hears like some music, and lo and behold, that's the guys that got bodied last week, they practicing like nothing happened, he was like, excuse me, what the hell is going on, and all of a sudden we see old crazy ass nice stalker Richard, he over there, you know, just lurking like he usually do, and then this guy with this long hair, he comes over with, uh, what's his name, Jury, and he was like, no, you can't have this, because he was trying to put his hands on that old weirdo, and so he gives him a guitar pick, and uh, the guy asks um, Richard, who are you with, or something like that, and he said, Satan, he shows the little six-pointed star, you know, the whole Illuminati, sacrificial star, bloody star, all that, and the dude was like, right on, I was like, really? And so we see crazy ass, Richard, he up in the woods, just playing, acting like he a rock star, with some glasses on, and jingle jangles, Benjamin tackles the dog shit out of him on the ground, and so he was like, what are you doing here, he's like, I'm here to finish you off, because you ain't finna kill my son, and so they just talking, I'm thinking it's about to go down, and Bruce, well actually no, they was fighting for a few minutes, you know what I'm saying, they was scrapping, yeah, wait, 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 wait. yeah, they started scrapping for a few minutes, and then they get like in the street somewhat, and all of a sudden Jingle Jangles gets hit by a car, Bruce crazy ass, and so Jingle, he just like, he just rolls over into the woods, and uh, Bruce gets out the car, and he was like asking Richard, are you okay, and uh, Richard was like, damn, he got away, he was like, thanks to your ass, you know, looking at Bruce, and he was like, wait a minute, I recognize you, you were mere ass, you was all on the news, and on the papers, and whatnot, and he was like, I'm trying to be like you, I'm trying to get on my high body count, he was like, I'm trying to go after these two bitches that cut my thumbs off, and stuff, and he was like, look, I'm trying to get like you, let me show you a little something, so he takes Richard to the back of the trunk, and he shows the dead body, and he just stabbed the shit out of right in her titty chest, and, uh, Richard was like, damn, this is something new. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, basically Bruce, he wants to get into the blood gang. And so he Br Ramirez told Bruce who that was that just rolled over in the woods with the Jingle Jangles and, you know, his history. And he was like, is that who, I, who that was? And so they want to go find him. You know, he want to get his revenge and whatnot, all this revenge going on. So he cuts his uh, hand and says, Master, show me the way or show us the way. And so he cuts his hand. Bruce is looking like, damn, this motherfucker is crazy. And then we see Donna and Brooke back at the hotel. And I think Brooke had said, I think she know who I was or she knows me or whatever. And uh, Donna was like, girl, no, girl, no, you're dead. Everybody thinks you're dead. And they get a knock at the door. And Donna had looked through the thing. And lo and behold, it's redhead. And Brooke was like, don't answer the door. And so Donna answers, well, opens the door and old girl was like, hello, Donna. I know you and you, meaning Brooke. And uh, it goes left. And Brooke was like, what do you want from us? And she was like, you know, come to my room and I'll show you exactly what's going on. And so basically she's been studying the little massacre situation back in 1984. And, uh, you know, she knows everybody and their history. And uh, she knew that Jingle Jane was, he didn't really have nobody, you know, supporting him or whatnot. And how she knew Donna was because she know that she was the one that released Jingle Jangles and told him about what was going to happen at that camp, which is how he got out of that um, asylum and whatnot. And so, basically, she wanted to know why, out of all of that, you know, because we all know Brooke got arrested and falsely accused, 
uh, you know, why did Donna, you know, keep her alive? And she was like, did you give her something to make her heart slow down and make it seem like people was, you know, make people seem, make people think that she was dead. And uh, she she just wanted to know why, why? And Brooke said for re revenge. And Donna was like, no, don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. She was like, no, she just going to keep on digging. So we're going to give her the best damn story she can ever have. Right? And so with that being said, they negotiate a deal. Right? So Brooke says, okay, we take you back to the camp. Right? We show you everything that happened. We break down some scenes and stuff of how she got up out of there and how everything happened. Right? And with that being said, in return, you let us go. You don't say that I'm alive and you don't give them Donna's uh, identity and everything. You just let us go. You leave us the hell alone. And she was like, okay. And she was like, but what about the killer or something like that? And Brooke basically said, it wasn't me. And let alone, it wasn't Jingles, right? It was Margaret crazy ass. Margaret is responsible for all this going on. And so she was like, listen, if y'all can prove that Margaret... Okay, Margaret killed all them people. I'll send you a, I'll send y'all a first class ticket to Paris or something like that, a first flight, whatever, something like that. And so they was all looking at each other, and bam, we go to commercial. After being hit with a car, um, Jingle Jangles he wakes up or whatever, and he sees uh the counselor with the long hair, and uh, he was basically talking about how oh, how my, I'm, I'm now we all know he killed himself on the camp, right? And he um. He was like, how did I still feel all this pain and fear and agony and distress and distraught and everything? And uh, he asked the counselor, how many times you got, did you die? He was like, hell, I done forgot. I done forgot. I done forgot counting. I don't even count anymore. You know what I'm saying? But um, he grabbed some help, and I thought he was going to kill him. I'm like, for what? He already dead. He ain't going nowhere. He was basically saying Ramirez has to die. We already know that. And we go over to the next scene, and we see Montana and Trevor, you know, these two, they in the bed smoking, knowing damn well they can't get, well, Montana, she can't get high. And then Trevor went on to say she can't have an or jism and uh, some other things that ghosts, you know, can't really get into. And so she was like, it's okay. We could just pretend. We could be lovers. We could be together forever. And uh, Trevor went on to say, oh, you know, I love you, Montana. Um, you know, you're 80s forever. And then they do this romantic ass kiss and that you know, dramatic ass 80s song that was playing in the background. And then they get all dressed and they leave out the cabin. And Margaret sees them from a distance, like kissing and smooching and all that type of stuff. Because we all know Trevor can't stand Margaret ass. But, you know, he doing all this for the money and the lavish luxury lifestyle that he's motherfucking living. So um, we get back to Ramirez and Bruce still looking for Jingle Jangles. And, you know, Ramirez went into, you know, go and talk about how he was on this role and how, you know, he met Jingle Jangles and he looked up to him, but he portrayed him. And we all know why. Because, I mean, Jingle Jangles, he wanted a better life for himself. And when uh, Ramirez got locked the hell up, you know, he wanted to go live his life and have a family of his own. But that was short-lived thanks to crazy-ass, nice-talking-ass Ramirez. And, uh... You know, basically, he was going on to say he has to die. You know, all this back and forth, revenge, 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 mess. And so, all of a sudden, Xavier crazy ass pops up, and he was basically saying he could help them out, and he going to show them where Jingle Jangle's body was at. So, his body was all buried in the sand and in the dirt. Well, not the sand, but the dirt and the leaves and trees and stuff, and his little boots sticking out. And uh, what else happened? So, all of a sudden, they were just talking and everything about Jingles once again. And Jingle Jangles pops up out of nowhere and stabs Xavier in the back. And through the heart, I'm guessing, and Xavier's dead again. And Jingles was threatening uh, Ramirez that he going to end him over here. He can't leave. And so, basically, Ramirez was telling Jingles that he forgot. You know, you can kill all you want, but once you die here, because, you know, he was saying how he killed himself on the camp. He was like, once you die here, you know, you stay. You can't leave. He was like... I'm gonna go to Alaska. I'm gonna kill your son. I was like, you just, you just eat, you just an evil little bath. You need to die right here, right now. And so while Jingle Jangles is doing all this talking, as he yokes up uh, Ramirez, and he told Bruce, you know, you stay here, you gonna die. And Bruce was like, I don't want nothing to do with this. And so he yokes Ramirez up on the damn tree, and he doing all this talk. He was like, you know, you don't deserve to live, and you gonna get your justice. You gonna get what you gonna get your righteous dues and owes and everything else. And before you know it, Jingle Jangles gets shot in the head. I'm like, who the hell shot him? And all of a sudden, we see Marg with crazy ass. And he was like, what the hell is you doing here? And so Marg, she went on to say, look, I need some new killers. I got something going on. I got a plan. I got me a plan. So she going to have these two fools going to do all this bodying and killing for her. Anyway, um, 
we see Brooke and Donna and the redhead. They're finally at the woods, and she's showing them uh, one of the sites where Jingle Jangles and Ramirez, the Night Stalker, were fighting while she was trapped in a net. Um, and really, the redhead wasn't really believing her. She was being all sarcastic with it. And, you know, Donna was defending Brooke and saying, girl, this is what happened. You know, chill out. You know what I'm saying? All you care about is a damn check. But anyway, Brooke had a plan herself. She said she's going to take old redhead back to the shack or the shed where Jingle Jangles had her ass, right? And that's where she's going to kill her. And Donna was like, girl, you're not a murderer. But she was like, look, this is what has to happen. Because she ain't finna just expose us. She ain't finna just have us all out here like some damn fools. And so, you know, Donna, she's going along with the plan for now. So, we see Jingle Jangles. Once again, he wakes up. He's tired. Oh, before we get to that part. Um, while Redhead, Donna, and Brooke, while they were still walking along, you could see Margaret and two boys you know, they all looking at them in the, in the bushes and whatnot from a, dish, a distance. Not in the bushes, in the trees. Looking real creepy like like they finna just swoop right in the head with somebody. Just swoop, just one good time. But anyway, um, we see Jingle Jangles. He's tied up um, on this tree. And we see all the crew complaining about him again. We see Montana, Xavier, Ray, Chet, and the rest of everybody that he killed on the camp. And they were basically like saying, you know, you are to blame for us being dead. You're the reason we gone. And just like a, Xavier was saying that, you know... He killed him. Not really. Margaret killed your ass. Why are you sitting up here lying for her? We all saw it. Yes, he put you in the damn uh, oven, but you didn't die. You lived because Birdie said, it's speaking of Birdie, where is she at? Why didn't she die on the camp too? Xavier killed her. What, because he, I guess because he spared her or something in a way, like from just bleeding the fuck out or something. That's why she didn't, she not popping up. Like where the hell is Birdie at? What kind of bullshit is this? Y'all showing favoritism to certain characters, but you know, whatever. But anyway, they was all saying, you know, he needs to die and he needs to be tortured and all that. He was like, look, but Ramirez is the real enemy here. He doing all this extra stuff. He over here, he trying to go kill my son. And y'all can at least have sympathy for me for that. And he was like, I cannot fail my son. I need to go kill Ramirez so he can't get to him. So he can stay his ass there. And they were like, no, he's a dickhead. He don't need to be on this camp. Let him go. And basically... Um, Jingles was like, look, I know what's coming to me, but at least let me do this first. And so he brought up the fact that Montana was messing around with uh, Ramirez and how he, he just went overboard because he was like, you know, he needed somebody to believe in him with this crazy psycho bullshit that he's been doing. And, you know, Montana, she was looking all salty then. She was looking all real salty then. And so with that being said, after that, we see everybody at the chat. We see Brooke and Donna and... um redhead at the little shed shack whatever and you know she's breaking down what happened there and while donna she's outside she tell brooke tells redhead to turn around close her eyes and put herself in her shoes and she was going to you know doing her little creepy like speech before she almost slit her throat and that's when donna grabbed her and tackled her on the ground and she told redhead she said bitch run i was too through <laughs> but the girl ran and Donna had to calm her down. She was like, look, you are not a killer. Yes, this evil is in you. It's in all of us. But this is not the main focus. This is not the main goal. The main fucking goal here is to motherfucking get revenge and kill Margaret ass and anybody. If we, we need revenge on somebody, it's on Margaret. Not another useless soul. We don't need redhead ass. Let her go mess up, some, mess up her own self some damn way. And so... um. You know, Brooke was saying she ain't got nobody. Donna's like, no, girl, that's a lie. You got me. We're going to be the final girls. And then we see Redhead running, running around in the woods and whatnot. And so all of a sudden, here come Ramirez pops up out of nowhere. You know, when Ramirez pop up, something ain't going right. Something about to go down. And then we see Margaret. She turned around. And, you know, she was like, you know, you're the Night Stalker. And then she turned around and see Margaret. And then all of a sudden, Bruce pops up out of nowhere and grabs her by her neck. And she was like, look, I'm a writer. I can write you a good story and everything. Oh, I don't have to write none at all. And Ramirez was like, bitch, I hate writers. And just gutted her ass. And then Bruce stabbed her ass. Da -da 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 -da. Boom, bow, boom, bow, boom, bow, boom. It was just a hot mess. And Margaret, she went on to talk about how she said something about John Lennon. Somebody refreshed my memory. And uh, now, we all saw what happened with Kaja Gugu and his little tour mates and whatnot, right? We're going to kill all the music artists that come to the festival. I said, excuse me? 
And you know, like I said, Margaret is crazy. And so are these two fools. They all smiling and smirking at her like this is a good deed. So Montana, she was just all by her lonesome after, you know, getting like blamed for Ramirez going on this rampage. We all know Ramirez was crazy before that. I mean, let's just be real. But it did get more hectic when she was trying to, when she sent him to go kill Brooke that night. But that was long ago. So Trevor finds her. But she didn't really, she was basically saying she didn't want to be found. And she went on about, because she was in her feelings, you know. She felt some type of way about her being blamed for Ramirez. And she she made some very valid points, though. You know, how men can do crazy shit and they get praised for it. But yet women can do the exact same thing and they will get put down like a motherfucker. Put down like a wild ass dog. But she was saying she would not take the blame for Ramirez going on his crazy ass killing spree. Because he was crazy before me. So what you talking about? And you know Trevor was saying oh. But she did say she do like killing though. And you know she loved every bit of it. She loved everything about it. And Trevor was like you don't have to bring your past into the future. You know what I'm saying? We could be together. Let me kill myself for you. And 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 and, and uh uh, Montana was like, boy, please, I need somebody as fucked up as me. I don't need you. Go away, Trevor. Go away from me with this. So he runs off, and it's just hunting woods. So once again, Jingles is tied up again, and we see Xavier and them two idiots that was dressed up as, as him trying to do that little prank they tried to do, but it didn't work. Um, and they got him all tied up again, and they started stabbing him and everything. He was like, you're going to die. You know, you're not going to know any peace. And he was like, no, nah, put him on the boat. You know, he's going to die slowly or something like that. So as they, they were stabbing him repeatedly, he got blood all in his teeth coming out of his mouth. It's all gross. They put him on the boat, and he's slowly floating. And he was like, Bobby, I'm sorry. So I'm guessing he was talking about his son, you know, unless he was talking about both of them, his, his younger brother and his son. And he sees Montana. She's just walking in the woods, you know, after going off and, you know, telling Trevor to leave her alone. And all of a sudden, somebody grabs him and drags him down into the lake. Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees style. That shit was tight. I kind of felt something like that was going to happen too. And again, Jingles wakes up again after being dragged into the lake to drown Jason Voorhees Friday the 13th style. I was here for that. I don't give a damn what y'all say. And so, Jingles wakes up again. He got a whole new get up on. He had this plaid lumberjack shirt on. Blue plaid lumberjack shirt on. And uh, there's this little boy who, obviously, is Bobby, his brother. And there go his mama. But this time, she's not blaming him for anything. She's, she's looked way better. You know, she made little sandwiches and whatnot. And, you know, Jingles was like, you know, he failed his son. He felt his, how am I supposed to be at peace? How am I supposed to rest? And so she's basically saying, listen, the past is going to haunt you if you let it. But however, she was saying how grateful she is for bringing back uh, little Bobby, I believe. I said that was his name. And, you know, Bobby was like, you know, nothing's going to hurt you now. You're, you're free. You're safe with me. Come on and play. They go fishing and whatnot. And before you know what the episode ends. So this was a cool little episode, you know, I, nothing too big happened, nobody got bodied, important anyway. But I'm hoping, because next week is the finale, um, it's called The Final Girl or something like that. I'm hoping that Brooke and Donna come out on top, and uh, I hope they get rid of all of them. I hope they get rid of Margaret, crazy ass, Bruce, they should have killed him anyway, because um, Donna, she trying to be Captain save -all. and uh um, Ramirez killed his ass on the camp and, and he could stay with the rest of them because that's what he need to be anyway instead of going on this killing spree and I guess we'll see what happens with Jingle Jangles I don't know if he's going to stay with his family or is he going to try to come back and save his son we don't, we don't know, we're going to see however this was a cool little episode and uh, I can't wait to see what, what the finale is going to be like but like I said hopefully Brooke and Donna will come out on top and they will be the final girls but with that being said if you guys enjoyed this video and if you made it to the end please hit the thumbs up button comment below what you thought of uh last night's episode what was it called again uh, rest in pieces uh what do you guys think about it and uh if you had to choose who what team are you on team brooke and donna or team margaret 
and Bruce and uh, Ramirez. Y'all let me know in the comment section below. And send me some reaction requests. I would love to react to these videos for you guys once again. And hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys later on. Thank you all for watching. Taylor Rain, I'm out.